Hello, welcome to day 40, a spooky Halloween edition of Calculus. Uh, today we're talking about two things that um, are going to be more of a treat than a trick if we learn them well. Um, they will help us out very well in the future. Um, today we're talking about <clears throat> concavity and inflection points. So I'm going to talk a little bit about concavity and how we determine uh, the concavity of a graph F. Okay. <clears throat> So when we look at curved functions, they tend to curve in two different ways. They can either be what we is referred to as concave up or concave down. So just to kind of show you what it looks like, let's take a look at what a concave up graph looks like. So if we wanted to say that F is concave up, the way to remember what F looks like, F is smiling. So notice the shape of the graph here. This curve is like a smile. It's, it's curving up. So it doesn't matter if this curve if it's curving up above or below the x-axis. So here's some other concave up graphs. All three of these graphs are concave up. The way I think about it is um, that it's smiling. Concave up, if you take out the concave part, it says cup. It's like a cup. It holds water. Right? If we poured water into these graphs, it would stay in there. Okay? So let's talk about concave down. I'm going to come back and annotate that graph a little bit. But let's take a look at what concave down looks like. So if F is concave down, what would be the opposite of smiling? Well, that's frowning. Concave down, frown. That's how I remember it. So let's look at some graphs that would be concave down. So there, F is concave down. And again, it doesn't matter if it's above or below the axis. It just matters the shape of the graph. Right? Once again, none of these graphs would be able to hold water. If we poured water into them, it would spill down. Let's concave up and concave it down. Let's think about what's going on from a calculus perspective on these graphs. Because we're going to be able, we're going to need to be able to tell concavity without knowing what the graph of F looks like. So let's think, let's take a back, take a look back. So let's think about what's happening in terms of slopes of tangent line, in terms of F prime. As I'm moving along my, I'll change colors here. As I'm moving along my graph here and doing different tangent lines, What's happening to those tangent line slopes? And this is going to be true in all of these graphs. Well, when we take a look at this, as we're moving, these tangent lines, right, take a look at the the uh, first one there on the left, right? That, that tangent line farthest on the left that I drew, that first yellow one I drew, is definitely a negative slope, right? Maybe it's like negative one or something. 
The second one I drew was maybe was still a negative slope, but it's it's less steep, right? Maybe like negative 0.25 or something. And the third one I drew is now a positive slope, and maybe it's up to positive 0.25. Then it's maybe at positive 1. Then the slope is at positive 2. What's happening here is F prime keeps getting bigger, right? What's happening here is in all of these cases, in all of these cases, F prime is increasing. So what would that mean? Right, F prime is increasing. So F prime keeps getting bigger and bigger in all those cases, right? Take a look at it. In all of those cases, F prime keeps getting to be a, a bigger and bigger number, a greater and greater number. So let's think back. What did it mean when F was increasing? F is increasing when F prime was positive. So what do you think it means when F prime is increasing? That would mean F double prime is positive. Ooh, that's pretty sweet. Similarly, it's the same thing but reverse for concave down. F prime would keep getting smaller and smaller, right? So take a look. Look at this tangent line. A positive number. Look at this tangent line. A positive number, but not as steep. It's a smaller number. Maybe it went from 2 to 1. Now it's at 0.5. Now it's at, this F prime is at 0. Now F prime is negative. Now it's a bigger negative number, right? More negative number, right? In all these problems, what's happening is F prime is decreasing. Okay, that's going to be an important note for us to make, okay? We have a, a set of several definitions that we just have to be known, and here's what they are. Okay, you ready? This is a one for the box, right? So put it in a box when you're done. F is concave up. When, the one that we're going to use most commonly, the second derivative is greater than zero. Okay. Another definition that goes along with this is the first one that we kind of came across. We could say, another way to think about it is F prime is increasing. Now there's a big difference between being positive and increasing. Right? On um, today's work, and for the work on this particular standard, we're going to be always using the definition F double prime is greater than zero. But eventually we're going to look at graphs, right? And if I have a graph of F prime, and I need to know when F is concave up, I'm going to look at that graph and report when is F prime increasing. Okay? So box that up, draw attention to it. Again, Right now, we're primarily going to use this definition, F double prime greater than zero. This will come when we look at graphs later. Okay, but both scenarios are true. If I know that the second derivative is positive, I can be 100% certain that F is concave up at that point in time. If I know that the first derivative is increasing, I can be 100% sure that F is concave up at that time. Okay. Let's get the second definition then. F is concave down when F double prime is less than zero. Or we could say, so again, this is the one we're primarily going to think about now, but later on we'll talk about it as F prime is decreasing. Well, on, when the day comes to take the AP test, you need to be very comfortable with both definitions here, both in terms of the second derivative and in terms of the first derivative. Right? So the second derivative is really awesome because it can tell us that what the shape of the graph looks like. And that's going to be super important in 
in, especially when we look at different graphs. Okay. So again, super, super important. Okay, let's take a look at an example here. Okay. So here's my example. So we have a function f of x, f of x equals x cubed minus 3 halves x squared minus 60x plus 5. My question for you is, on what interval or intervals, right? I put that s in parentheses because I don't want to give away whether it's only one or two. In fact, I don't know because I haven't done this problem. Uh, on what intervals is f? Mm, let's do concave down. And then we need to justify. Our justifications always come from our, um, obviously come from our, what am I trying to say? Oh, our justifications come from our definitions. Okay, so if you got this problem on a test on a homework on the AP test we need to figure out what we need to do first right so we want to think back to our definitions and by AP test day you're gonna have a whole bunch of definitions in your head so that's why we practice them so much so it's like second nature right when test day comes I want you to look at this and know immediately what we have to do right now you might not immediately know what to do but by test day we need to be there Okay, so here's what it says. On what intervals is f concave down? Justify. So let's think. What does concave down mean? Hmm. Well, we just learned that concave down means that the second derivative is negative. So if I solve this problem, the first thing I would do is make a note to myself. I'm looking for the second derivative to be negative. Well, we've gotten really good at determining when functions are positive and negative, right? We always do that by determining when a function is equal to zero and then checking signs around it, doing a sign test. So this is another uh, part of calculus where doing sign tests is going to be very helpful for us. Okay, the, after I know I'm looking for f double prime to be negative, right, I realize that they gave me f. And they're asking about f double prime. Okay. So what do I need to do? Well, that should be pretty obvious. I need to find f double prime of x. In order to find f double prime of x, I need to find f prime of x. So let's do f prime of x first. So f prime of x would equal 3x squared minus 2 times 3 halves is 3x minus 60. So there's my first derivative. That's the derivative I'd use if I wanted to tell if f is increasing or decreasing, right? Or if I wanted to find critical points. Then I would just go ahead and find the zeros, plot them on a sign test, and I could report anything that the test asks me. But the test didn't ask me about increasing, decreasing, or about critical points. It asked me about concavity. Oh, that's the second derivative. So I gotta do one more derivative here. Again, doing second derivatives of polynomials is a piece of cake. 6x minus 3. Okay, so this is my second derivative. Again, what I'm aiming for is I want to figure out where my second derivative is negative. Okay, so I want to figure out where the second derivative is equal to 0. So let's go ahead and set it equal to 0 and solve. And I get the second derivative equals zero at x equals a half. Okay? That is not my answer, but that's very important for determining my answer. What I want to do now is I want to create a number line and test. But again, remember I told you how important it is to label your number lines? What am I going to label this number line? 
Well, it's all about the second derivative, so I'm going to label it f double prime of that. I only have one uh, x value to plot here, and it's the number half. Now what I want to do is I want to test the number to the left of half, and I want to determine if it's if uh, f double prime is plus or minus. So when I do that, um, a number to the left of half, I'll use zero, because it's an easy number to multiply. So I plug it in, again, I'm plugging it into f double prime, six times zero, Minus 3 is a negative number. Then I want to choose a number to the right of half. I can use 1. 6 times 1 is 6. 6 minus 3 is a positive number. What I figured out now is where my second derivative is minus and where my second derivative is plus. And I wanted to report what? Well, I wanted to report concave down, so I want to report the interval that is negative. So what would I say and how would I justify? Again, these justifications are easy when you know your derivatives. I'm going to say this, f is concave down on, oops, not when, I'm going to say on the interval. Okay, I want to report this interval here. The leftmost point is negative infinity the rightmost point is half. So f is concave down on the interval negative infinity to half because my justification, that's where f double prime of x is less than zero. And I'm done. What I want to do here is take a look at our graph of f and see if that makes sense. Okay, I'm going to take a look at the graph of f here, see if that makes sense. So I'm going to go back to my graph, trusty old graphing calculator. I'm going to plug in my f function, which was x cubed minus 3 halves x squared minus 60 x plus 5. And I don't really know what this graph is going to look like too much other than I know it's a cubic. Right, I'll just hit zoom 6 for my window and see if I need to change it. Okay, that graph doesn't help me very much. I need to see what's going on. Right, I can see the zeros on here. But I can't really see what's going on with this graph. So I'm going to hit my window button and I'm going to make my x min and max a lot bigger. We'll see if 100 works. All right, it's getting closer. I'm going to make it just a hair bigger. I'll make this negative 300 and 300. Yeah, what this, what I just dis discovered was that f is supposed to be concave down from negative infinity all the way to positive half. Let's see if that matches what we're looking at here, right? I'll move my cursor over here so you can kind of see. So take a look. Yeah, this, everything to the left of negative half, or sorry, half is right here. So everything over here does look concave down. But take a look at what happens at half. Everything over here looks concave up. And it says drag screen. I don't want to do that. Okay. So what we're saying here is at that point of half is the exact time when I am switching from a concave down graph to a concave up graph. So over here, we're smiling. Over here, we're frowning. And the point of transition then is x equals half. Right here, it's switched from a frown to a smile. F prime switched from decreasing to increase. Hmm, pretty cool. So let's go back and talk about that switching point. 
That switching point is called an inflection point. I'll abbreviate inflection points I period P period, uh, just like I do CP for critical points. Okay. So an inflection point is the point on the graph where F switches concavity. These are kind of hard to pinpoint exactly where it is. Usually when I look at a graph, I can say, okay, somewhere in here, right? We switch concavity. Sometimes it's hard to see exactly when that happens, but it's something that we can kind of kind of see. Okay, so let's talk about an inflection point in a technical definition. So here's what we're gonna say. F has an inflection point. When what happens? Well, it's when we switch concavity. Well, what determines concavity? Well, it, it's determined by the sine of F double prime. So F has an inflection point when F double prime switches sines. Box that. Now again, what number do we usually switch signs at? Well, that number would be zero, right? When you want to find an inflection point, we start by setting f double prime equal to zero and solving for x. But we have to actually switch signs for it to be an actual inflection point. So when we do our sign test, right? So look back here for a little bit. When we do our f double prime sign test, right? One half was a candidate for an inflection point because that's where F double prime equals zero. But we actually have to do a test here to ensure that F double prime actually does switch signs. We know that zeros sometimes switch signs, sometimes don't. In this case, F double prime did switch signs. It doesn't really matter if it goes, if F double prime goes from minus to plus or plus to minus. As long as we switch signs, there will be an inflection point, okay? So it's kind of like on critical points, going minus to plus or plus to minus was a big deal, right? Minus to plus meant a min, plus to minus meant a max. But here inflection points, it could be minus to plus or plus to minus, as long as F double prime changes signs, okay? So we're gonna have a lot of fun doing these inflection point, concavity problems, right? And then I'm gonna be super fun and mix in, I'll ask you, when is F both increasing and concave up? Ooh, that'll be fun. All right, guys, uh, have a great Halloween, be safe, don't do anything dumb, and have a great Halloween night. Two chains, bye.